In today's video, I'm going to be going over the history of Topps, how a company founded in the 1930s went from producing chewing gum to cards like this for the last 70 years. Let's get started on this video. Okay, so let's start taking a look at the history of the Topps company. Uh, Topps first was created in 1938 by the Shoren brothers, a few different brothers, and they established the company. However, uh, the first gum and card products wouldn't come out until a little bit later. So, in 1947, Topps introduces the Bazooka Bubblegum brand. Uh, some people might know Bazooka as some of the early releases in the 2000s, uh, one that had uh, the LeBron James rookie card, but uh, this was the brand of gum that Topps created. Now, in 1949, they released their first cards, which was the Topps Magic set. Now, if you've seen what the Magic cards look like, I'm obviously putting on the screen now, they're very, very small and they're kind of dull colorish. Um, they didn't, didn't really pop compared to the later releases of Tops, but now they were on the market. In uh, 1950, they also started doing some pop culture cards, but they really aren't uh, that popular. They were based off of a Westerner, um, but nothing compared to, again, what's coming up. Now, 1951, Tops makes a bunch of strides. So in this year, they release their first ever baseball cards and uh, you can see they had the red and blue backs. So there's the image here of my Duke Snyder that I picked up at the Miami uh, card show a, a few weeks ago and a really, really sharp card. But these were the first uh, baseball cards besides the Topps Magic that they ended up producing. Also this year, they had the 1951 um, boxing set and they had a really famous card in here, Rocky Marciano. And Rocky was one of the inspirations for the Rocky movies uh, featured later on. A famous Italian fighter that never lost a fight, one of the goats of boxing. And uh, if you look at boxing cards, this is one of your top 10 uh, most famous rookie cards in there. Uh, undisputed one from 1951 tops ringside of Rocky Marciano. Um, pop report's pretty low, and I could see if boxing cards get more popular, this kind of being like a, a Mickey Mantle type card of that, because this is from uh, the first set of boxing cards that tops ever produced. A uh, really, really cool card and pretty scarce to find. Now, flash forward one more year later in 1952, we have the iconic flagship set. Uh, and when people think of baseball cards, at least post-World War II, they automatically think of tops. And this is the set that cemented their legacy. It has the famous 1952 Mickey Mantle, which a lot of people think is his rookie card, but it's actually his second year card. Um, Bowman created his first a card in 1951 and you'll see throughout the 50s that there's a big rivalry between tops and bowman i actually just did a video on this a few days ago so if you want to go check that out and learn a little bit more about this rivalry um go check it out over there i'm not going to go into it a lot into this video um i'd also say if you want to watch that video before this one i uh, click out because you'll find out what happens uh, to the rivalry shortly so flash forward now in 1954 Tops releases its first hockey set. It's starting to expand sports. And then two years later in 1956, Tops ends up buying uh, the Bowman Gum Company and uh, puts Bowman out of business. So they don't, they no longer uh, produce any Bowman cards. It's only Tops now and they can they're gonna control the market for a very, very long time. Uh, one year later in 1957, there's a few different milestones. Tops releases basketball now. So Within the last few years, you saw 51, they had boxing cards, 51 also baseball. Now in 54, there's hockey, and in 57, there is basketball cards. Um, basketball is kind of short-lived um, because Fleer ends up taking over that in a few years later, but it's a while until Topps produces more uh, basketball cards. Anyways, also the big note in 1957 is the standard card size. So um, if you think about what a baseball card looks like today, that's what came out in 1957 before that. Uh, cards were a lot larger, um, so they were scaled down, and that's what fits in the card cases today and what we know opening up different packs. So bring back in 1960, Tops ends up doing their first gold cups. So if you remember a lot of different card brands, how they have the gold cups, like the all-rookie team, Tops ended up doing that. Uh, back then, they originally wanted to have the kids vote on it, um, but in reality, Tops just started plastering these logos on some of these better players from the time. So 1972, Topps goes public for the first time. You guys are watching this video in 2021, and you know Topps has just recently went public with an IPL. But uh, Topps ended up going public and private multiple times throughout his lifetime. And I'm not going to go through every single one in this video. I'm just letting you know 
and 72 tops goes public for the first time and people uh, start buying up the stock and goes up quite a bit flash forward again to 1981 and now there's multiple brands competing in the baseball card market so there's a federal lawsuit against tops what a shocker but uh, now we the monopoly is broken and there's other brands out there competing with tops you have donruss out there along with fleer and then uh in the 1990s the junk wax era takes over so mass producing of cards unlike today where there's so many different sets there's just a few sets and there's thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of cards uh printed out and uh the cards flood the market uh since there's so many printed the value is very very low uh, compared to where it really should be for some of these players. I mean, you can see how cheap a Barry Bonds rookie card is or a Greg Maddox rookie card is or Randy Johnson. The only cards from this era that have a ton of value are the Tiffany cards, and that's because they were very, very short printed. I mean, most of them had less than 5,000 copies out there in existence, and you're talking about things that lasted until today. So uh, when taking a look at the Junk Wax era, it's the Tiffany cards that are really good. Also coming from the Junk Wax era, Topps brings back Bowman. So if you remember in 1956, Topps purchased Bowman and shelved the company. Well, and back in 89, Bowman is back. And they're the full-size cards uh, like in the early 50s. And the size wasn't too popular, but the set sold. And uh, Bowman continued to be a staple right after that. If you look at where Bowman is today, it's more for prospects and rookie cards. And yeah, it's still there today. And everyone really likes their Bowman Chrome autographs. In 93, Topps released its first version of Chrome Cards, and it's the Topps Finest brand. Now, today, Topps Finest doesn't have nearly as much of a um, hobby craze as Topps Chrome does, uh, but these were the first Chrome Cards in the hobby in 1993, and the refractors on these cards go for a ton of money. 96, Topps releases the Topps Chrome brand, which, again, is going to be the flagship brand for a very long time, and people really, really love the set, especially as they have different refractors and variations and you'll see that throughout the history of that um 2009 tops ends up getting the exclusive license for baseball um so no other brands can technically print the logos out there you'll see that um that panini still prints baseball cards out today but they do not have the license uh, that is why a lot of the player caps are have no logos why the team names aren't there and a lot of other things a lot of people think there'd be it'd be an interesting competition if both tops and panini both had the license um, but only Tops has the license. Uh, shortly after Tops gets the baseball license, they lose the basketball license and Panini takes that over. So you have Panini having the basketball license and Tops having the baseball license. And at the time, it was a good thing because baseball was a much larger sport than basketball was collecting wise. Uh, if you see the how the hobby has changed over the last few years and basketball is the number one sport, people loved baseball a lot more than basketball at the time. And you could still find uh, your rookie cards, let's say like a LeBron James or Kevin Durant, very cheap compared to where it is today. Back in 2012, now Topps releases its first ever digital cards, and that's through the Topps Bunt app. Uh, this is kind of like a precursor to NFTs. You could have a digital card rather than opening up an actual pack. And they used to put in like fake autographs and patches into these uh, so you could get those high end cards, but pretty much for free through the Topps app. In 2016, Tops releases Tops Now, so you can get printed cards based off of an event in a baseball game. So let's say a rookie gets called up for the first time, or someone hits three or four home runs in a game. Tops will create a card specifically for that, and then you can go online and buy that card for about ten dollars. And then in 2021, Tops uh, starts releasing NFTs. So the last year, crypto craze of the NFTs, you had like NBA Top Shot and a bunch of other crypto sites that started selling art. Um, but Tops entered the NFT craze and uh, sold out really, really quick with their first ever uh, Tops baseball card NFTs. So uh, this was a short history of the Tops brand. There's a lot of minute details and this video could easily be over an hour. Um, but that is how they went from a gum company, which was first founded in 1938, uh, the first bazooka gum in 1947 to now today where it's producing uh, baseball cards and then along with now getting into the NFT side of things. It's crazy throughout the history and 70 years of now printing baseball cards. Who knows what's in the future for Tops and how they're going to compete with Panini. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe down below and then comment what brand you want me to see to do the history of next. Would you rather see Panini 
or do you rather me go out there and do leaf? Anyways, I'll catch you guys in another video.